Welcome to Pipes Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you my solution to painting spindles before fitting them into place. As part of the video, I'll show you the products I use to prime and finish the spindles, and I'll show you the tools I use to apply them. So first of all, diving straight in, I'm going to show you quickly my solution to holding these up while I paint them. And part of that includes drilling a small pilot hole in each end of my spindle. For this, I'm just actually using a, a 3.2 millimeter HSS drill bit. You can obviously use a wood drill bit. It's just what I had available and it'll do the job perfectly. So I'm just starting the hole off like that, then turning my drill bit in line with the spindle. I'm only going in about five mil, no further. Then just turn it round and do the same on the other side. Then I'm just using a five by 80 millimeter wood screw. Place that in the hole by hand and just give it a quick turn. Then using an impact driver, just drive it in a few millimeters. That's enough. Turn the spindle around and do the same at the other end. And as I said, you don't need to drive that in too far, just so that it's solid. So now when I'm painting the spindle and the paint gets to the top of the spindle, I can simply hold the top of the screw like that and twist the spindle around using my fingers. And that means that I won't get paint on my hands. And by having a screw in the same place at the bottom, I can rest that on the ground. And it means again, I can use the paintbrush and roller right down to the ground without it getting mess all over the floor. And if you look here, I've made this little contraption. I've put a screw here in the underside of my stairs. I've then done the same on the other side. On this side, I've looped it round so that can't come off. On this side, I've simply just hooked it over so I can unhook it when I need to. Once I've actually painted a spindle, I can then, using my hand on the screw, come here, loop the wire around just like that. And once that's looped into place, that will hold that steady and upright. And then looking down to the bottom of the spindle, again, you can see that screw is elevating that up off the floor so you're not going to get any marks on your spindle. When I come to do the next spindle and hook this off there, I just loop that around the next spindle like so, bring it back across, hook it back over the screw like that. This spindle is now held nicely in place and it won't go anywhere. That's the idea. We'll see if it works in a minute. Just to show you my approach to painting the spindles, and I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, it's just the way I've done mine, and it seems to have done a decent enough job so far. I don't actually sand these. These came pre-sanded, and these spindles came with my staircase, which were ordered from Stairbox. And if you feel them, they are very smooth. Now, I know some people say to go over them, first of all, and get rid of any slightly rough surfaces, but, you know, there's nothing obvious. If there is, I'd take it down, obviously, with like a 320 grit sandpaper, something like that. Um, but this is very smooth. So unless there's something obvious, I'm just going to go straight over that to start with. And what I'm going to use is this um, Leyland and it's fast drying undercoat. And this is for wood or metal and it's just a brilliant white. And I find this gives a, a lovely surface. It's very thick. It's got sort of filling properties if you've got any bumps in your spindles or anything. And it leaves like a, a nice matte, almost slightly mottled finish, a bit like the primer you get on uh, MDF skirting boards, that kind of thing. So I stirred my undercoat with a screwdriver. I cleaned it off with some wet wipes. I just poured it into this small roller tray here for my mini roller. And I'm gonna start by using my brush, just dabbing it on. And I'm just gonna get that into these turned sections of spindle so that I know the timber finish is covered. And something that I should add at this point is that I haven't actually used any knotting solution. Now I know this is recommended um, over knots to stop the color coming through later, but these are my spindles. It's my own house on my head, be it if this goes wrong. So as a caveat, I would say if you're doing this, it might be worth you putting some knotting solution over your knots first. I'm not gonna do it. You may say I'm cutting corners. Well, we'll see. And actually, I'd be interested to hear your views on that if you want to leave them in the comment section below. Do you need knotting solution with a good undercoat? Are there undercoats specifically designed to do both jobs? Let me know below. And also, have you had any experience of not putting knotting solution on and then having problems later on? Or maybe you've done that and you haven't had any problems. Again, please let me know below because it's very useful for me to know and for others watching the videos. So there we go. Once I've got that into all those um, turn sections of spindle, I know all the timber surface is covered. I then go around it like you just saw with the brush, a little bit like that, just to smooth out the paint. Then taking my roller, and this is the first bit of undercoat I've put on this roller today. So 
I'm just going to try and cover the roller evenly by turning it around in different directions like that. And then with this, I'm just going to roll up and down the flat section of spindle first. And you can see now where the screw comes in handy at the bottom because I can just rotate this around without any danger of it touching the, the cardboard below. And then when you go over the turn sections, I just literally use the roller in like that, just give it a gentle squeeze. You can see there, and the roller or the sponge roller will give a little and get into those gaps. As long as you've coated it already with a brush, so you're not really forcing that roller because you don't want to squeeze the roller too much because you'll misshape it. Then you notice it starts to spread that out and you get that lovely matte mottled roller finish all the way down your turn section as well. Just be mindful that when you do that, you do get little marks like that there. So just make sure you go back over and just roller that out with your roller so you don't get any drip marks or uneven coats of undercoat. Then even on this turn section here, we can just use the roller. Then just using the brush, we do the same again on the turn section of the spindle. You can just see how I can rotate that with my hand using that screw at the top, just like that. And I can turn it whichever way I want. And again, just using the screw at the bottom to hold it into place without touching the floor. Then I'll just finish off the undercoat on this section here. And then using the roller again, I'm just gonna slightly push it into those turn sections, making sure it evens out those brush strokes. Just ensure where you've now got that extra bit of undercoat that we even that out by going up and down and spreading this out all over the timber. And sometimes don't be afraid to do that and just drag in one direction around that corner because paint will collect or undercoat will collect on the corners sometimes where you've forced the roller at both sides but you don't really want to be squeezing the roller too hard you just want to sort of let it run over gently with not too much pressure then once you're happy you finish covering the spindle in undercoat or paint we can put it up on our piece of wire i showed you earlier just hook that in there bend the wire and that's now held into place so you can see that hooked at the top and as i move backwards you can see it there with that screw just bracing it off the floor so now we can move on to the next one so that's all the spindles covered with undercoat now we just got to leave them to dry off for a few hours so actually now a couple of days have passed i left these to dry i've only just got round to coming out to sand these off now before i do sand them i just want to show you and i don't know if the camera does this justice but this just lovely sort of matte stippled finish you get it's just like when you get the prime skirt in an architrave pre-primed with the spray that you buy from the shops these days and this leyland paint or undercoat really does do a nice job of providing a nice even consistent coat all over these as long as you use the roller and take your time when you feel that closely like that it's just ever so slightly rough to the touch so i don't know if i've got exactly the right uh, sandpaper this is just one of my sanding pads it's all i got available but i'm using a 320 grit sandpaper and i found this when i was doing the rest of the stairs really good just to take off um, that slight rough finish and just give you a really nice finish it puts a slight key into it ready for your next coat of gloss now, obviously i'm outside purely because of the mess i want to keep it clean in there because that's where i'm painting it doesn't make a huge mess but you do get this horrible fine dust that'll end up over everything and probably end up getting on my my paintbrush and my roller so best to do it outside and keep it clean and i've just folded it in half i find it a bit easier to use that way and then just really lightly go over your undercoat like that you don't have to push hard you're just taking off that top edge and there we go that already is lovely and smooth to the touch And if anything, you've got to be careful you don't push too hard because if you do on the corners, you'll find you start to take the undercoat off back to the timber and that's what you don't want because otherwise you defeat the idea of putting the undercoat on in the first place. And when I get to these bits, I mean, you, a sanding sort of pads might be a bit better for this just to get in those gaps, but I actually find this is okay. If you just go in like that and just turn the spindle around, you only need to do it lightly. Same on that bit there. Just sort of twist it round, give it a light brush 
and the same on that bit just kind of sand away from you like that and already that feels way better so just go over it with your hand this is the important bit use your hands and just see if there's anything that's slightly rough if it is just go back over it lightly until you get it nice and smooth all over And then just one last check all over once you've finished. I feel there that bit is ever so slightly rough, so I'm just gonna give that a quick light sand. There we go, much better. I'll just do these bits as well. And that is nice, so that's done. I'm just gonna do this for the other seven spindles. I've also got the handrail and the base rail to do as well. I didn't show that on camera, but I, I painted those in exactly the same way. So once you've sanded down your spindles and handrails, it's a good idea just to give them a brush off to get rid of any remaining dust, or better still, you could use a hoover with a brush attachment, and that'll probably do a slightly better job still. So for my final coat, I'm just using this Wix Interior Wood Paint Quick Drying Gloss. This is a water-based gloss, and I forgot to mention that the undercoat I actually used earlier was also water-based, and I I personally prefer the water-based paints because they're easier to apply, they don't smell, and when it comes to the gloss, they don't discolour, unlike the old oil-based gloss, which often turns that nasty yellow colour if it's not exposed to light over time. Then in the same way we applied the undercoat, I'm going to do the same with the gloss. The only thing you have to watch when applying the gloss over the white undercoat is that you can't actually see where you've painted already quite as well as before because you haven't got that wood finish. So when you're doing it, you have to be a bit more systematic, sort of doing the turn bits and then working from top to bottom. Or otherwise, without looking closely, you might miss a bit and not quite get the gloss all over the spindle. As before, I've just hooked it in that wire and that is now held into place. And before I carry on, you can see here's my handrail and my bottom rail. And just to show you what I did, where you have the timber inserts, which are for your spacers for your spindles, I actually fixed those into place just using two screws, one top and bottom. And I mean, if it comes to the point where I have to fill those later when I use them, then fine, but it might be I don't need all that timber anyway. So I've just done that and I'm going over that with the undercoat and the gloss while it's screwed into place. And then again, just like the spindles, I put a screw at the top I put a screw down there at the bottom and then I set up another little bit of wire there and I attach the handrail in the one and I attach the bottom rail into the other in exactly the same way that I did all the spindles by there. That's all the spindles glossed, they're all hung up on that wire, now I've just got to leave those to dry. And I'll just quickly show you that on these stairs which I've already finished and you can see if you look closely that although you get that slight sort of glean or shine when the lights are on, You've also got that, which I don't know if the camera's doing it justice. You can see by here that slightly sort of rough finish to the hand, so it's, it's smooth, but it's got that nice matte kind of finish to it. And also, when you look by here, like around the wood grain, it still shows through the wood grain. I mean, you can go over it with more coats of gloss if you like that older fashioned sort of shiny finish, but I quite like the fact that you can see all the detail of the grain in this, and yet you've still got a nice durable finish it's a little bit sort of gloss like, but with a slightly duller effect. So we just jumped ahead in time. It's about 18 months since I put the last coat of paint on these stairs. Now you'll remember earlier in the video, I said I didn't use knotting solution on the timber. So now we'll find out whether I should have used that knotting solution or not, pardon the pun. And as you can see on the handrail by here, unfortunately it would appear that I should have used the knotting solution. And there is just some very light staining starting to come through. If you take a look on the side of the stairs, you can just about see a small bit of stain in there. And there's an ever so slight bit of staining by there and there. So quite clearly the answer is yes, I should have used knotting solution. So hopefully now you can learn from my mistake. If you're gonna go through this process, apply the knotting solution to the knots on your timber, and then go through the process that I showed you in the video, and you should have a nice durable finish. What I think I'm gonna do is go over the stained areas with some knotting solution. I'll maybe use the primer and then a bit of gloss over the top again and see if I can remedy the problem. A problem that hopefully you now don't have to have. So hopefully you found this video useful, and if you have, please give 
the video a like. If you're interested in any of the products or the tools I used in the video, I'll put links to those in the description section below. If you want to know what I get up to when I'm not doing DIY, you can head over to my other channel, Pouse Out of the House, watch some videos, like, share, subscribe. And finally, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel and press that bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell. Thank you.